Glory to God. I greet our brethren, the ones who are watching online with the peace of the Lord. I would like to invite the church to stand up in reverence to reading of the word which is located in Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, verse 7. Hebrews 11, verse 7. Amen. Who didn't bring a Bible can follow on the projection. Let us all read. Na fé, Noé, divinamente avisado das coisas que ainda se não viam, temeu e para a salvação da sua família preparou a arca pela qual condenou o mundo e foi feito herdeiro da justiça que é segundo a fé. Amém? Os irmãos podem estar sentados. Pela fé não é. By faith, Noah, in a divine way, was warned of the things that did not know, and he was afraid, and for the salvation of his family, prepared the ark. My brethren, throughout this month of June, the church, Church Maranatha, all its church around the world, world we pray, we fast, have early dawn services, we have visitations being made in the homes, because the Lord has set aside the month of June for the families of the church. Not only the families that come here in the service, the ones who are connected with us directly, but also for the entire family. Even the ones that do not do not uh, have fellowship with us, even the ones that don't have the same understanding of the Bible, of salvation. So throughout this entire month, we paid a spiritual price. And we're going to finish this month with the ser special service because the Lord has a word to each one of us here. And we have a great concern with the families. We have a great concern with our children because we know that the family is the basis of society. And we also know that God has a blessing for the families. God is a project for each family here represented. For each family that will still be built through matrimony, through everything that is the project of God for our families. And this is our great concern with our children to make them carry this teaching of the Word, this teaching regarding something that is so important and that is being strongly destroyed by the system, by today's society. It is being devalued, is being let in second place. But we're going to speak about this, which is the product of God for our families. From the beginning, God, when he created man and woman, God caused man to have fellowship with God. Man was not made to die. Man was not created to live a life that we see today on the newspapers, in our cities. What will you see? People killing one another, people destroying their marriages, people not even giving any worth to this. So I, we state that 
the wedding, matrimony, what is created by God, established by God, is for the strong ones. It's not for the weak ones. Why do I say that? So now it's easy, right? So I'm going to a gym, I'm going to get strong, and I'm going to overcome everything. I'll be able to deal with everything, right? No. The Bible says that I can do all things in the one that strengthens me. So when man is geared towards God, when man is in Jesus, he becomes strong. And the, the marriage is for those who are being strengthened, that are being guided by God to live a life that was created, that God per permitted. So today, the enemy of our souls is trying in every which way to destroy this which is sacred. He is fighting for this. In the same way that the Holy Spirit fights with the church, fights with the Christians, so that we may be, be able to overcome the difficulties and the indifferences and everything. The Holy Spirit leads us to overcome the problems. That's why I want to say, once again, we need to be strong so that we are able to be victorious. The action of the enemy over the families. This is our greatest concern with our children. <coughs> How they, they are going to be tomorrow. Who is going to be the wife of your son? Who is going to be your sister-in-law? Or actually, your daughter-in-law? Who is going to be your son-in-law? Who is going to be the husband of your daughter? What type of marriage they will be? What is the understanding regarding the matrimony they will have, they will have to take on later on? That's why we pray incessantly. That's why we are persisting with the Lord. That's why the church prays, it kneels down, because we need strength. And it needs to be spiritual strength. The strength that comes from God. That's why the faithful church positions itself. That's why the faithful church takes the word of God as the basis for our lives. And we need to fight for this. So that the things of the world, the modernity, the easy things of this world, that, oh, Oh, you need to change it. Oh, you can. You need. You have the right to be happy. But the word of God states to us that the one, the ones who are allow the Holy Spirit to take control of their lives, the ones who are allowed the Holy Spirit to guide their lives, those are going to go through trials same difficulties but we overcome everything in Jesus we overcome everything in Jesus it is worth it to be persistent and fight for your children it is worth to pray for a family it's worth for you to deny the things of the world yes it's worth for you to reject the things of the world and to remain steadfast in Jesus that's the way that from the beginning we see in the text that we read Noah went through moments that we went through as well today Jesus in one of his sermons he, he compares his second coming to the days of Noah imagine how important is the experience of Noah. Jesus compared his second coming with the experience of Noah. 
Noah, who was warned by God because of a sinfulness that was taking over the corruption that the God forms Noah and tells him that he needs to build an ark because the deluge is coming. I'm going to send a deluge and I'm going to exterminate with sin with this population that lives a life of sinful life corrupt not caring for anything only caring for today that's what Jesus says in Matthew I'm going to read so you can see Matthew 24 therefore in the days So Matthew 24, 37 says the following. So as it was in the days of Noah, it will be as well the coming of the Son of Man. Because in the days prior to the deluge, they ate, drank, and married, and got married. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they did not realize that was a deluge. And it swept all of them. And that's how it's going to be. The the turn of the Son of Man. So God tells Noah, Noah, you're going to build an ark for you and for your family. You know how long it took for the ark to be built? Just guess it. 100 years. 100 years. And for 40 days, the ark was over the waters. And why is that? Because Noah gave heed to the word of God. Noah, by faith, he believed what was the instruction of God. Differently than Eve and Adam, the first family established by God, the enemy went there and sown light. Do you remember? The first book of Genesis was when the serpent the voice of the enemy of our souls says, Eve, what is going on? Why can't you eat of the fruit of this tree? She said, no, because God said that we we can could eat of everything in the Garden of Eden, except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what did the enemy do? He said, no, that's not how it is. You can eat, you're not going to die. And Eve then stopped listening to the truth, the absolute truth, and began to hear, give heed to a lie. So we have been speaking a lot about this, about absolute truth and relative truth. We know that the relative truth is what can be contested. We see this a lot in the creative work where we study chemistry, physics, and other subjects that I don't even want to <laughs> come close to. They study a lot about this, about the relative truth, what can be contested, the truth, the laws, everything, all of this, what people change. This is a relative truth. But there is an absolute truth, which is the Word of God. And that Word of God defines us Jesus. This is the absolute truth that does not change, that does not bow down, that has never been influenced. Jesus is this. This is the absolute truth. Jesus says once, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And then in John 14, Jesus says, I am the truth, and I am the life, and I am the way. No one goes to the Father but through me. So the only absolute truth is salvation in Jesus. Because it is part of the redemptive work. Jesus, when he came to the world, he took on our uh, stand. He 
he came and uh, and did something that we could not could never overcome, which is death. So man, in order for man to go to heaven, he can only go to heaven through the salvation in Jesus. That's the only truth, the absolute tr truth, which is to be in Jesus. Eve, she gave heed to a lie. She allowed the lie to enter into her heart, and she disobeys the Lord, and then death began. So today, when we when you go to a burial, when you go sometimes to cry and say your goodbyes to a family member, and it is because the absolute truth of God and the word of God that spoke to Eve of this fruit of this tree you shall not eat and the enemy was able to uh, convince Eve and now lie began to be a part of the life of man and consequently death became part of a man's life so all of us today we know the difference all of us who serve the Lord, we know exactly what is the absolute truth and the relative truth. truth. And many are giving heed, many families, many fathers and mothers are giving, are listening more to the voice of the enemy, the voice of lies, than to the voice of God. And this has led many homes to be destroyed. This has led many youth to the destruction, to take their own lives. Today, there is in Asia, in the region of Japan, and that region, an excessive number of deaths. Nobody s speaks about it, because if you publicize it more, more the youth are going to be influenced to do the same. So this anxiety, this absence of the truth, this absence of Jesus, this absence of salvation in Jesus is leading our children to take their own lives. And this is because they are listening to the words of lies, the voice of the enemy. But Noah, he did the right thing. Because Noah, by faith, he waited for 100 years until the Word of God was fulfilled. Can you imagine, my, my brethren, what it is to wait for 100 years for something to happen? I, I try to understand, you know, enter into the story myself. So imagine Noah. He had nothing. He had no resource. Everything was manual. Not like we have today. We go to Home Depot, we go there and buy the wood already cut. Can you imagine what it was to build on an ark? Having to go to the forest, choose the tree, cut the tree down. Without any type of modern tool that we have today, can you imagine how difficult it was? Dragging it on your on there back and bringing all the way to the place where he the, to the place where he built he chose to the, the, the terrain most appropriate to build the ark so now imagine the people there thinking Noah hey what's up what is this Noah are you crazy I'm insane no God no would answer no God told me to do this I imagine Noah's children so imagine how Noah, taken over by the Lord, led his family and children to help him. I imagine his wife, hey Noah, come here to have a, a breakfast. Oh, lunch is ready, Noah. Then goes Noah, he stops and eats with the family, prays to the Lord. And this, my friend, repeated for how many years? 100 years. The Bible don't even speak about the moment any moment where on which Noah questioned God, much on the contrary, Noah was Jesus remembered Noah in one of his messages. Imagine what an example. No not even Abraham. Jesus 
compare his return. There it was Noah for 100 years every day doing the so called ark. God gave all the, the measurements to uh, make the ark of this, this height, the, the diameter, the length, two, three floors. So you're going to put an, a window all the way on the top, Noah. Only one window. Of the, it, God even gave the measurements of the window. The only window. God did not even, only didn't give the measurement of the door. And the word says that when God's time was completed, God told Noah, Noah, call your family and enter into the ark. Because it's going to happen. And Noah and his children enter and entered into the ark. And then rain began. Like this afternoon today, wind. And the thing began to flood. And rain kept coming. And the thing began to fill up. Like in Valadares in Brazil when it rains. Who is from Valadares? Can you see It became flooding, flooding. Imagine Noah inside the dark, and when Noah entered with his family, the door was closed by God. From the outside, it was not Noah that closed the door. So now I, I can imagine. The Bible says that for 40 days, the ark remained afloat. So now imagine if there was a window on the side. Moses would probably see the misery of the people there dying, uh, hitting the ark, trying to enter. No, open, open, for the love of God. Can you imagine the situation? And Noah in there with his family inside of the ark, listening for sure the cries without being able to see. I can't imagine if Noah had a, a little window he would pick up three four five enter here but there was no window on the side there was only one window on the top and we're going to see my brethren that throughout this entire period word of god which is the absolute truth once again was fulfilled and when men Contests this when the, the, you when you uh, uh, you are led by the word of the enemy, when man cancels the instruction of God, when man ignores God's will, when man isolates what is the project of God for his life or for his family, everyone suffers. You can't run. You can't. You will be an impediment not only in your life, but you are going to be an impediment for your entire family. You'll be a problem. Remember Jonah? Remember Jonah? Jonah, if he had not, Jonah was he the one who entered into the boat there and the storm began. If they had not thrown Jonah on the ocean, everyone would die in that boat. And when you are a Christian and you know the truth and when you find yourself in a difficult situation, Jonah was there, comfortable, in silence. Everybody was praying for their God, asking God help. And Jonah was there because he knew that he was wrong. He knew that he was running away from the word of God. He knew that he was disobeying the Lord. And when man lives a life of disobedience, the consequence comes. When man remains in sin, when man remains in the action of sin, con in continuous sin, then the consequence comes. Sin, we all sin, but the, mis the real mistake is practicing sin. The mistake 
of the Christian is to live a life of sin because sooner or later the consequence comes, the judgment comes. And now Noah was warned by God and it was the he and his family are delivered from the from death, from the judgment, from the deluge. His whole family was preserved. Why is that? Because Noah chose to wait in the moving of God. And I want to say, my brother, it was not easy. It has not been easy for the faithful church to wait also for the promise of the return of Jesus. It has not been easy. But in the same way that Noah waited for 100 years for the salvation of his, for his life and the salvation of his family, we are also waiting. The faithful church is waiting for almost 2,000 years for the return of Jesus. And we are also knocking at the door of the grace. The church is also experiencing this. Many times you in your, at work, at school, you, in your home, in your city, on your borough, how many times people look at you and even question, why don't you do this? Why don't you uh, try a luck here, try a luck there? Why don't you uh, bet something, gamble? There are millions of dollars, you're going to win money on a lottery. Why don't you try this? because you have chosen to serve the Lord. The faithful church has their own path. The faithful church has their own destination. The faithful church has already has the, its history written here on earth and in heaven. When John saw in Revelation the church in heaven, he already saw the church victorious. John sees God allows John in the island of Patmos to look and to see the faithful church there in heaven because the project of God for the church will be fulfilled independent of me wanting or not independent of you being a part of the church or not the faithful church will be taken away from this life the faithful church will be preserved from the deluge the faithful church will be preserved from eternal death because the word of God, which is the absolute truth, states that to us. And we believe in what is the truth. We believe in Jesus. Because we know what God has for us, which is something real. We know what we are what we are living. We know that the salvation in Jesus is not a, a fable, it's a story. No. We have experienced, we have lived salvation in Jesus. Because salvation, we live here on earth. Salvation, the first steps of salvation are here. From the moment in which you had an experience that was an indelible experience in your life. From the day that you saw and believed in Jesus. From the day that you said, this is what I want for my life, nothing else. I want to live salvation in Jesus. Uh, independent of the will of my parents, independent of the will of the government or the leader that I follow. No. I want because Jesus made a mark in my life. And from then on, we live numbering our days towards eternity. There's nothing better than that. It's to have the absolute assurance that you live a life maybe sometimes wrong but there is a power in the blood of Jesus because every time that we falter we run to the arms of the Lord and there is power in the blood of Jesus that delivers that purifies us that sanctifies us that forgives our sins and makes us be firm in Jesus this is the absolute truth. Nobody can contest this. Oh, but you're a Christian. In this way, are you a Christian? Yes, I am a Christian. I'm a servant of God. 
But Jesus died for me. And I try every day to live a better life because the Holy Spirit leads me to always go back to God. The Holy Spirit works in the church and the Holy Spirit is the one that leads you to always be choosing to hear the voice of God. But in the same way that Noah was preserved, he and his family, God also wants to preserve you and your family, the service God prepared in eternity for this, so that you may glorify the Lord. Because your family was chosen by God. Oh, but my son, my daughter, my husband, they are not in, God, in the presence of God. My wife is not Christian. But be persistent in the Lord. And play your role as a Christian. Play your role as Noah. And become more uh, another Noah. So that the Lord may bless your life. Because through your testimony, what was said in the morning. You need to leave a message, to preach a message, it's very easy. But to give the testimony of a true Christian, a true servant of God, only the ones who are in Jesus. And that's what God is waiting, expecting from us. So when you do this, when you give this testimony, your children, your family, will see in you that you are someone who was called by God. Because God died for you. God the Son died for you. So that today you can request your soul, eternal salvation in the presence of God. So may the Lord bless us. Let us hear a song.
Lord to God, I have other church to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise you for this special month that you set aside for us to fast, pray for our family members. Praise the Lord. Because this opportunity only you can give to us. One offer you, Lord, our praise, our gratitude, Lord, for the great operations of the Holy Spirit throughout this month for our lives, for our family members. You know that you have a special zeal towards us, towards our family members. You have taken care of us with great love. You, have, you don't have words, Lord. Enough words to thank you, Lord, tonight for so many blessings that you have given to our lives for our family members because you're the one that loves us in a wonderful way. You loves us unconditionally. That's why we are here tonight, Lord, to offer to you our gratitude for everything that you have done for us, for everything that you have done for our family members, for the ones that you have saved, that for the ones who have brought to your house for the hearts that your good Holy Spirit has touched to be here tonight. Because you're not here out of a habit. We are here because we need the blessing of the Lord for our lives. That's why we surrender to you our gratitude for yet another opportunity that you are giving us. Because we do not know what is going to happen tomorrow. Only you know the tomorrow our tomorrow Lord that's why we thank you Lord because we are here once again to offer you our gratitude our praise to you for everything that you have done and because what you ought to do because we know that the ones who praise you in spirit and truth you do even more we thank you for everything in the name of Jesus and let's sing this song
Glória a Deus. Vai subir na minha loja. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Brother, the Lord was showing that many here, that many here are sad because not all their family members have been saved in Jesus. But in the same way that God spoke to Moses, in Genesis 6, 14, make for you an ark of wood. And Moses, for 100 years, he was faithful to the Lord. And the Lord also wants us to make for us and for our family an ark. And the construction of this ark, which is the work of God, which is the project of salvation of man, needs to be preserved in our hearts maybe you have a family member they have not saved Jesus yet uh, accepted Jesus yes yet by going to pray you're going to fast you're going to do what is God's will which is your call for the construction of an ark and allow God to operate and at the right time the word of God will be fulfilled and we will all glorify the Lord. Nothing is lost. Until the Lord sent the rain, before the Lord sent the rain, everything is possible. Before God comes back, everything is possible. All can be saved. But Jesus is the door. So there is no measure for the door. Why the door did not have any measurement? Because Jesus cannot be measured. He is everything. Jesus overcome everything for us. There's no limit. There's no size. There's no width. There's no beginning or end. Jesus is everything. That's the word of God. Make sure not to say the measurement of the door. Because Jesus is the door. The door is the way that has been opened on the cross of Calvary. So that today you and your family... Would be able, would be able to reach salvation in Jesus. But the door, yes, it had a measurement, but only at the top. And why is that? Because the window is your stand before God. It is limited. The more you seek and the more you pray, the more you seek the Lord. The more you place your knee before on the Lord, on the ground for God, and the more you fast, you see the glory of God, because the the window at the top would only allow Noah to see heaven. Noah was not able to see what was on the side, the failure of the world. And we also, the faithful church, you are invited by God to see only the glory of God. And the more you seek the Lord, the more you see the glory of God. So my brother and sister, knock at the door of the grace. Yes, build your ark, and you see that God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. So let's pray, bring this service to a close. Lord, we glorify your name, because truly, Lord, you are here in this place. We have experienced salvation in Jesus, and we can testify of your great love. And we have come to this place, Lord because who has provided for us victories upon victories. You have had trials, Lord, yes, but you have been more than victorious in Jesus because to this day you have helped us receive the service of adoration to your name and that your word may remain in the hearts, generating life, generating, Lord, the desire to seek you more and more and that their spirit may deliver the souls, the hearts, and operate salvation in Jesus. That's the prayer that we say. I'm really thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. And your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts and the life of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Church may be seated. I've come to the end of the service and if you desire a prayer and assistance we're here with the ushers and deacons. There are a lot of people on vacation but we are here at your disposal. This week here uh, the holiday the brand are going to be doing services at home uh, prayer service each one seeking the Lord and we'll be back here through zoom we're going to be on Friday and in presence on Saturday Thursday at home and Saturday morning early dawn amen so Saturday night we're going to have a supper of the Lord here. Amen. So that we can be here glorifying the Lord for the victories they have been able to achieve in the month of June. The visitations that have been made. So we're going to be here in the service tonight. <coughs> a special service. Supper of the Lord. So a schedule. Organize your schedule so that you can be here. So uh, supper of the Lord is a special moment of the Lord. If you had a problem with one of your brethren, seek him and uh, resolve any problem because the supper of the Lord is a special moment. Any other thing, Pastor Sullivan, Wayne, anything? I want to wish you all a peace of the Lord, my brethren.